Hi, Seth. Welcome to Sweetwater. Yeah, man. Thank you. We're really glad to have you My here. My first time. What brings you here in town? We are on uh, the tour Winter Jam this year, and uh, we're playing, I don't remember the name of the venue. You probably know. Yeah, Memorial, <laughs> Memorial, Memorial. Coliseum. Yes. So we're uh, stopping through today, and so come spend the day with you. Awesome. How's the tour going so far? It's, it's awesome. It's great. We always love this tour. I feel like we're kind of like on a three-year cycle. Okay. Um, so we did it in 2012, 2015, and then again this year. It's always awesome. I mean, it's it's an arena tour, you know, so there's you're playing in front of a lot of people, yep. nice dressing room space, which is always <laughs> awesome. Um, and we always bring out a lot of production for this tour, you know. We kind of bring out all the, all the gags. So okay. there's a lot going on in our show. Um, to squeeze in in about an hour, but yeah, it's awesome. We love this tour. It's still pretty early on. We got about another month and a half to go. Okay. So yeah, man, it's going awesome. Awesome. Well, great. Well, so you're the guitarist for the band Skillet, and obviously it's a pretty incredible role for you. Um, but how did you get started in terms of uh, playing guitar and getting involved in music? Yeah, so <clears throat> I come from a a very musical family. My dad plays um, everything with strings. Steel guitar, pedal steel is his main instrument. So I grew up on on uh, 90s country, uh, you know, but um, I morphed into a rocker at, at some point down the line. <laughs> but so my parents had a uh, had a Southern gospel group, okay. um, it, kind of in my tri-state where I grew up, Ohio, Kentucky, uh, West Virginia. And uh, so I, I grew up on the road with them every every weekend, you know, until I was about 11 or 12. And um, that's kind of where, where it started for me. I actually played drums before I played guitar because my oh, really? brother played drums in the group, you know. I okay. always have looked up to my brother, so um, I thought he was cool and he is cool. I did, <laughs> but I wanted to be a drummer, so I played drums for a bit um, and then got into guitar when I was probably about sixth grade. Okay. Um, and then that kind of that kind of took over. So, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, how does a guitarist from Ohio end up playing in a band like Skillet? How, what, what was the journey from growing up in Ohio to playing yeah. stadium tours? It, still bizarre to think about, honestly. Uh, even seven years in, or however however long I've been here, it's still bizarre. I I'm from a small town called Wheelersburg, about seven thousand population. Um, okay. So I had uh, I had connected with. Um, you know, you know how it is with, really with any job you're trying to, it's all networking. Mm -hmm. Really that's any job you, job field you go into, especially so though with music, you know, it's, it, I feel like when people are looking for a gig or it's always, oh, I know this guy, I know this guy, he's a friend of a friend or, so <clears throat> I was kind of trying to do that when I was about 18, when, you know, graduating high school, 18 to kind of college years, I was trying to network and nev nothing really ever came of it. You know, Except for, I always I always like to share this story and pl plug him when I can because he's he's a, he was an amazing mentor, good guy. Uh, Toby Max, guitar player. Tim is his name. Tim Rosenau. He uh, he messaged me back one day. He's like, yeah, next time you're in Nashville, let's meet up. This was years ago. I was probably 18, 19 years old. And um, so, long story short, we kept in touch after that after that meeting, and uh, I would go see him anytime Toby was. Toby was close and uh -huh. we'd hang out and I heard in 2011 I heard that from a through the grapevine that that Skillet's guitar player before me was leaving so I, I didn't know anybody except for Tim so I, I hit him up and I was like hey see what you can find out about this and basically one thing led to another and um, I felt like I was supposed to send in an audition video I, I, I have a pessimistic side of me that didn't think any <laughs> you know I'm like oh, a band of, the, of that size probably has already had someone lined up for for a month you know mm -hmm. and um, yeah I, I, I always say uh, it's it's my personal belief that you know if if you're meant to be somewhere it doesn't matter what job it is um, I'm kind of living proof that you can kind of throw resumes and all this stuff out the window if you're meant to be somewhere you you'll uh, you'll be placed there so that's kind of my story in a nutshell awesome that's great right. so i read in an interview that you you feel a special connection to psalm 144:1 and how it relates to your ministry with the guitar so can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah it's actually um it's actually kind of you know every band kind of has like their um 
you know, whatever they do, pre-show kind of huddle up kind mm -hmm. of thing. That's actually what we do as a band. We kind of huddle up and, and recite that verse. And, and it's it, what it says is, praise the Lord who is my rock, trains my hands for war, gives my fingers skill for battle. So um, that's kind of what we, we recite, the four of us, before we go on stage. And we all kind of think of it as, you know, every time you go to stage, it's kind of like you're going to battle. Um, with whatever whatever you believe but for us you know we kind of feel like we're going out there and and we're portraying and doing something that's bigger than ourselves you know so mm -hmm. we we love to recite that it's meaningful to all four of us but i particularly love that love that verse it's one of my favorites so can you tell me about your favorite guitar your go-to guitar and what it is that you end up playing oh it's hard to pick one. I'm such a, uh, this, my <laughs> wife makes fun of me because when we go shopping, I'm never good at picking one thing. And it's <laughs> the same thing with guitars. Um, so we, we are an exclusive, we play PRS exclusive. Um, so gosh, I, I guess right now I'm loving, I have a, um, a Tremonti model with the stop tail okay, yeah. and the finish frostbite fade. I just, I, you know how PRS is. It's like you're drawn to the finishes. So mm -hmm. I probably, from the finish aspect alone, I, I love that guitar. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's probably my favorite. But I, I'm, uh, I have two Tremonti models, one SC245, and I've also added the, um, the Mark Holcomb uh, model live too. So I'm, I'm really digging that. And it's great for, for lower tunings because it's 25 and a half inch scale, so it, it'll hold up to some lower tuning, tunings better. Um, so yeah, that's currently what I'm running. And the Starla, I forgot about the Starla. Um, okay. I've currently added that on this tour. I've never brought it out before. So, okay. um, But yeah, that Frostbite Fade Tremonti is, it's, it's special. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. What about amplifiers? What do you like to play through? Um, I have three amps I run live. I use, um, Kind of the core of my tone, you know, it's just my main dirty sound. Mm -hmm. I split together a, a Mesa Boogie Dual Rec okay. uh, with a Paul Reed Smith Archon. And okay. those are on together at all times. There's never a time when it's just one or the other. I, um, and I run those through their respective 412 cabs. So front of house can, he's blending mm -hmm. them. He, he's using them equally. I don't know how he's panning stuff, but um, yeah, that's, that's my core sound is the Archon. Uh, kind of doing its thing, and then the boogie kind of doing its thing. And then my third amp is, um, it's a boutique company called Tyler. Um, okay. It's kind of a, a voxy type type okay. thing for my clean clean sounds. Is there anything in particular you like to use at home or when uh, recording? Yeah, um, you know, I I really don't deviate a whole lot. I mean, even from what, from what I do a lot, you know, I grew up a huge Mesa Boogie fan. Mm -hmm. um, Triple Rectifier was my first amp yeah. I got when I was probably, gosh, 13, 14 years old. And I still have that same amp. It stays at home. Uh -huh. um, so that I feel like that's kind of always my go-to. I love the Archon. I really, I haven't had a chance to record or play out with it or anything, but I love, PRS just released, the, uh, called the MT-15. Okay, yeah. It's um, Mark Tremonti's signature amplifier, and mm -hmm. it's, I... I'm blown away with it. I didn't know, I, I was talking to Mark about it months ago. Didn't know what to expect. He's like, yeah, it's gonna be 15 watts. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's really perfect for recording. You know, you can really get the, hit the tubes hard yeah. um, at lower volumes and get it to do its thing. Great for people that want a solid rig that don't have a lot of space. Maybe you're in an apartment or a bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, just a little lunchbox. I think it's about this big, yeah. a little lunchbox style amp. So. Um, I've played through it briefly, but I've, the reviews I've been seeing on it are, are, are awesome. So I'm really excited about that amp. Okay, awesome. What about pedals? I know that's a big question, a big area. Yeah. Is there any favorites that you have or anything that uh, you would like to share with uh, some pedals that you're using? Yeah, the, uh, for a couple of years I've been using the Whammy DT drop tuning pedal. It's the one, you know, they make the small one, like if you just want to do drop tuning, which yeah. is awesome. That's actually what Corey uses. Okay. on her board. I needed the whammy function too, so I got the big one that has the whammy function and the drop tune side okay. built in. It, it's heavy, but it's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I've used that for about two years. Um, and then I think about a year ago, I switched to the Dunlop John Petrucci signature wall, which okay. yeah. I love. Before that, I used, I had the Joe Bonamassa one, mm -hmm. which is awesome. But I, I kind of grew up 
you know, when I got in, I was talking earlier about getting into my rock side. Um, yeah. John Petrucci was one of my early, uh, when I discovered Dream Theater, I was like, what is this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, when they released the, his signature wah pedal, I, I wanted to check it out, and I love it. It's just such a wide, it's like the widest sweep on a wah pedal okay. I think I've ever heard. So I've used that for about a year and a half. I'm a big TC electronic guy as far okay. as delays and verbs go. Yes. I've, man, I have got the TC Nova delay. Mm -hmm. I think right when it first released, like in 08 or something. Okay. I yeah. think is when it released, and it hasn't it hasn't left my board since. I, I love it. I'm just familiar with it. Um, and then in conjunction with that, I use the uh, the TC Hall of Fame reverb, Weaver the pedal. little red yeah. one. Yeah. Um, and the tone print stuff on that. that That's the first TC pedal I've owned that has the tone print stuff where you can yeah. hold your phone up to your yes. guitar and it does some R2-D2 stuff. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, I have fun with that. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Love it. So what is next on your gear wish list? Next on my gear wish list. Well, I've already talked about it, but um, I, don't, I don't own the, uh, the PRS MT-15 amp yet. Um, and I'm a I'm an amp fanatic. Maybe, maybe even a little bit more so than guitars. I I just love amps, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully I can add that to my collection sometime soon. Awesome. You know, I feel like probably a lot of times when people think about uh, artists that endorse companies and stuff that you know they're probably like, ah, oh, they just do it because they whether they get stuff for free or they take good care of them. And in my case, like I said, I grew up a huge Mesa Boogie fan. I grew up a huge Paul Reed Smith fan. Um, you know, I grew up a big fan of, like my guitar hero is, uh, one, of, one of my biggest gu guitar heroes is, is Mark Tremonti. Okay. Um, and when I was 13 years old, you know, around the time I started playing is when he kind of hopped on the scene with, with Paul Reed Smith and they released his signature model. Yes. And, and I remember thinking like, oh man, I'll never be able to afford one of those things, you know, and to now be in a place to where I have a working relationship with them and to kind of be in with the family. Um, I'm, v I'm very passionate about being a PRS artist or a Mesa Boogie artist. So it's not just a thing where it's kind of nonchalant, like, oh yeah, they, they take good care of us, so I'll play their guitars. It's, no, I, 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 will, I try to keep up with everything they're doing and I, I'm still equally as much of a fan as the company as I was 15 years ago, you know, before I had one, so. Um, Gosh, gear wish list. They they make they make a hollow body called the JA15. Okay. Um, I don't have. I would love to have a hollow body. Um, I could I could do this segment for about an hour probably, but we'll <laughs> cut <laughs> we'll cut it off there. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Good. So I know with Scale, you guys have been super busy. What do you guys have planned next? So this year in 2018, um, we're we're already as far as Skillet goes, we're already kind of full-fledged kind of recording for the for the night it feels like Unleashed just came out like a year ago but man it's been out about a year and a half or so so we're already um writing has been happening kind of all forces go and recording we've been recording um hopefully um you know you, you, you try to make deadlines but hopefully maybe something will be out by the end of the year there are some other projects going on um within the um Within, within the Skillet family. So uh, I, I don't know how much I can share yet, but um, yeah, kind of keep, keep your eyes peeled, I guess I could say to all the fans. There's gonna be, be some things uh, popping up that we're all, we're all really excited about. Um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. We're excited. <laughs> well, what advice do you have for other fellow musicians that are looking to make an impact in the world? That is a good question. Um, you know, anytime I'm, this is kind of just coming from, yeah, there's multiple aspects of this, but the, anytime I'm kind of speaking to a group of young musicians that are one, just, you know, wanting to, to, to play for a living, wanting to be, wanting to tour or, or whatever the case may be, um, you know, I always say first and foremost, uh, what's going to keep you, what's going to keep you somewhere, or keep you, um, with, with a group or whatever, just a humble spirit will take you. I mean, obviously, I, I never want to act like I'm disregarding. You got to know how to play. You know, you got to yeah. got to know your craft, know your tone, 
you know, it, it's fun to spend time learn, learning your tone and crafting your tone and learning about gear and learning about all that side of stuff. It's important and you have to be able to. But I always think equally as much, maybe if not more so, a humble spirit is going to take you is going to keep give you staying power somewhere, you know, rather than I, I always, you know, for me, I, I put it like this, like if, you know, if, if I have a young musician um, that is a good musician that I think could would be a good fit for somebody, um, what am I going to put my name on the line for? Am I going to put my name on the line for someone that is a good player, is a great player? but they know they're a great player. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they're not afraid to let you know that they think they're a great player. Um, or I have this other person that's also a great player and knows their tone, um, but has a humble spirit and, and just wants to serve and, and they want to, they just want to be used. You know, mm -hmm. they, they want to just be a part of a family and fit in somewhere. Who do you think I'm going to recommend over those two people? So that's always what I try to preach is just um, spend your time crafting your instrument, but have a humble spirit in doing so you know it's one of my personal pet peeves is meeting egotistical musicians you know like it's you know it's and you can you can pick them out pretty quick so that's always something that's always very important to me mm -hmm. and um and believe in something know why you're doing what you're doing you know um for us it's uh i think it'd be really hard for me to do what i do you know we we gosh we play a hundred and 100 to 130 shows a year, which means we're probably gone 200 to 220 days a year, mm -hmm. you know, away from, I'm married, um, away from family. So I think it'd be hard to do what, what I do without there being a greater purpose and a greater vision, you know, right outside of just going out and playing music in front of people. So I think, I think you have to have a, you have to be driven and know why you're doing what you're doing and, and have that force. Okay. That's great. So you're away from home a lot. What advice would you give to somebody who's playing guitar in their local church? Yeah. Um, actually, I, I was there uh, right before before I joined Skillet. I was playing in my home church in Ohio. Um, and I think, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think, you know, if people were playing in their local church, I, I would say maybe there's probably a good population of those people that would like to be out touring, you know, like it, um, at least that's my guess. So something that I kind of realized, and it was kind of like a, an awakening moment for me when I was that age or, you know, and I was younger and playing in my churches, um, just allow yourself to be used where you are at that time. You know, it, for me, there was always like kind of a sense of, I don't know if a sense of panic is the right word, but you know, I was kind of like, oh man, I was like, what am I doing? I'm not, I don't have a steady job. I'm not going to college. I'm just kind of playing locally and whatever the case may be. But I think just r allow yourself to relax and just allow yourself to be used with whatever you're doing. If that's just playing in your local church, um, be used there. You know, um, I think God can use you wherever he wants to, no matter what scale of what you're doing, whether it's touring on a level that I'm doing, or if you're just playing at church every Sunday, I think you can be used. Um, you know, um, as far as playing stylistically goes, that differs a little bit from, from what I do. Um, you know, being, being in a rock band is, is very guitar driven kind of all the time. Uh, now playing in a worship setting like that, I think you, as far as musically, you kind of got to be more aware of, um, picking your parts and picking your time to shine and not just uh it's it's not like a rock band where i just I, i'm kind of lucky i get to <laughs> i kind of get to play all the time and shine all the time um worship music is different you kind of maybe at certain times got to be a little more taste driven you know in how you use delays or verbs and ambient stuff and how you're complimenting maybe the keyboard or how you're complimenting the melody that's going on a lot of worship guitar is very melody driven so you don't want to step on step on the toes of what um, your worship leaders doing or your the pianos doing because I mean as crazy as it may sound if you are getting in the way of that stuff it can it can interflect with with worship and sometimes mm -hmm. you know some even somebody out in the audience that's not musically inclined is going to be like something is 
sounding strange, <laughs> you know, or whatever. So I think, um, and I learned a lot of that from just playing in church is learning how to be, you know, kind of a team player, um, knowing when to lay back. You know, I can't remember who, who said this quote, but uh, I've heard it, and it's, ve it's very powerful, is, is knowing when not to play is equally as important as knowing when to play. Yes. And that, that can apply in, in worship music, mm -hmm. you know, know, knowing when to just to lay back and hit a chord and just let it ring and back it off with your volume pedal or do some cool swells with a, with a delay pedal. Um, so yeah, I would say let, let, let God use you where you are um, in your community uh, of, of people at, at your church and your band and congregation and, uh, and learn how to play with your band. I got to brag, brag on Sweetwater for a minute. I mean, uh, you know, doing what we do, um, it's not, a, you know, being away from home. And if, if gear goes down or something, it's not always easy to find it. So just having uh, Jeff, Jeff Holman, everybody, if you need a <laughs> rep, call Jeff Holman. He's our go-to. Um, getting gear out to us quickly when we need it, if, even if we're not home. Um, I feel like it, 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 it's always there in like a day or two. And I always love uh, I always love when I'm home and I order stuff. You get the little candy pouches, especially that come with Sweetwater stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I guess you and I started working together when I joined in 2011. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you're, I gotta we gotta thank you as as the band for being so accessible and getting Thanks. the gear out to us and ASAP. And so you're our go-to man. <laughs> thank you. Per particularly what what is awesome about Sweetwater is. Um, you can, no matter who you get on the phone, but obviously with, in our case, it's you, you can, um, everybody's very knowledgeable. I've, you know, like, it, at least in my personal experience in the past is if you go into some, to some music stores, especially, you know, some chain music stores, and you may ask a question, but you can, you can quickly identify the answer you're getting is, you wish you wouldn't have asked, <laughs> um, but uh, every you know you can call Sweetwater, and everybody's very knowledgeable. Uh, no matter what you're asking, and e even if it's a case like you know maybe maybe your rep's not a guitar player. If they're not a guitar player and don't know, they will go out of their way to dig, ask somebody here that is a guitar player, and get yeah. the best answer possible. Um, but in our case, I know I know with you like Corey. Um, is into all of our recording side of things with Pro Tools rigs, programming rigs, and interfaces and stuff. You've put together all that stuff for us. Yes. And uh, anytime she has a question about anything, I know she can shoot you a text or call and you get her squared away. So, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, that, and that means a lot, you know, coming from somebody that is out on the road and, and needs answers fast or it has a problem, if something shuts down, you're accessible. And so you guys, we applaud you for that. It's very, very efficient. Yeah, th thank you very much. It's, I appreciate you saying that. It's a pleasure to hear. Yeah, man. Seth, it was a pleasure talking with you today. Thanks so much for coming out. We really appreciate you being here and being able to show you around Sweetwater. And I uh, yeah, look man. forward to talk with you again soon. Yeah, can't wait to come back. Ready to do this.